Let's go over the steps in more detail. The first step is to identify and assess the risks. There are two pieces to this. The first step is to create a hazard log. That's simply a list of all the hazards for your project. The list can be started by using hazards from previous similar projects. It can be expanded via a structured analysis technique called HAZOP, which involves modifying the requirements with guide words to see what happens if things go in an unexpected way. It can also be expanded via project experience and in fact is a living document that is updated over the course of the life of the product. The result is a list of hazards that might be a problem. Once the list of hazards has been collected, a preliminary hazard analysis or PHA is performed. This usually involves using a risk table. Here's an example risk table. In this table, the rows correspond to the consequence severity if a problem does occur. While this risk table is generic, it's better make the consequence more concrete in a way that specifically relates to your project. For example, you might decide that a very high consequence is a $100 million loss, and a very low consequence is only a $100 loss that happens once in a while across the entire product fleet. The columns correspond to probability. Again, it is helpful to make the probability more concrete for your project. For example, very high might be something that happens every minute somewhere in your product fleet, and very low might be something that happens only once every 10 years across all the systems you've shipped. For each hazard, you determine consequence and probability, which gives you a square inside the grid. The square tells you the risk, which can range from the very low green squares to the very high red squares. Generally, you need to mitigate all the very high risks at least, usually the high risks, and so on. By the time you get to the very low risks, probably you can simply accept them because they're very rare events that basically have very little impact. Note that each risk has a number from 0 through 4 associated with it. That corresponds to a SIL, as we'll see on the next slide. 